Normally when I do this uh, welcome and, and thanks, it's kind of off the cuff and it's fairly quick. Well, it's not so quick today. And I've had to, um, I've had to type it all out to make sure that I remember everything. And as I was doing this, I was struck by how much um, as a group we've achieved over the last 18 months. So we're really here today to, to do two things. The one is to acknowledge and to celebrate our five um, PhD graduates because there was only a virtual ceremony and I thought it would be, I think it's important for us to actually really acknowledge um, the work that people have done and, and how well they've done. So that was the one reason. Um, the other reason was really just to, again, remind ourselves of how much we've achieved over less than um, suitable circumstances over the last 18, 18 months or so. And of course, probably the most, well, certainly the third reason, I guess, was just to bring us together. This is the first time we've been together as a whole group since November 2019. That is how much our lives have changed in the interim. And while we've been Zooming and Google Meeting and all the things that one does, um, it just seemed really important to have this opportunity to bring everybody together as a group. So that's why we found ourselves here today. So the first thing I want to do is to welcome everybody who's here. So our Higher Education and Human Development Group. A very warm welcome to Martino Mazinga, who's come all the way from Malawi to celebrate his graduation with us. It's lovely to see you again and to have you with us. And we're kind of sorry that you ever left us, but we'll, we, under, we understand. Um, a very, very warm welcome to Professor Naren Bejnath, who very kindly agreed to, to do an after dinner talk for us. I've known Naren for a very long time, so it's great to be able to catch up and, and to see him, and I think he's perfect for, for the role today. Um, Professor Lochner Mare, who's the head of the Centre for Development Support, under which our group uh, falls, and who's continuously and, and consistently very supportive of what we do. So thank you for, for joining us today. And then Professor Philippe Berger, who's Pro-Vice-Chancellor, I had to look this up, Poverty, Inequality and Economic Development. And he's also Vice Dean of our faculty. And again, somebody who's consistently supportive of the work that we do and has been very welcoming of the group's entry into, into the faculty. And then Glenn Taylor, who's the Senior Director in charge of um, the research director at the university, and I think it's probably fair to say, has been um, a great ally and a great friend um, to the group in terms of resources and support and ideas. So we're really, really pleased that you would be able to, that you're able to join us today. And then for those who could not join us today, Indaka is not well and couldn't make it, in Timmy, who's been in Tanzania for a while now, and Erasmus, whom we've never met, he's our new postdoc, and he's still in Zimbabwe because he got into a muddle over his passport. So he wasn't able to, to join us. But welcome everybody who's here and, and greetings to everybody who couldn't make it. So what I want to do is to celebrate um, the many, many achievements over the last 18 months or so. There have been books published, so Sandra and I brought out our COVID book, or our lockdown book, because I think we were finishing it off in the early days of, of lockdown, and we're doing a launch of the book at um, the HDCA Global Dialogues in September. Uh, Carmen's book is going to be coming out later this year. It's going to be open access, which I think is great. And then, of course, we've also managed to finish the Murato book, working with Monica and Mikateko and Patience, and that will be out at the end of the year, also open access, and of course it's the whole, it's the story of a very long research project. And of course, while I've not listed them here, the various articles and book chapters which are coming through in a steady stream from our researchers, our postdocs, and, and also now um, our PhDs. So I think it's great. It's, it's a really sort of solid achievement. I also want to recognize um, the competitive external funding which people have raised. It's very, very difficult to, uh, to win these kinds of awards, and I think it's a huge achievement for those who have. 
So very recently, um, Faith, who's CI on a new British Academy funded project with the Open University and Coventry, and she also got some additional funding uh, working with Mellis on the Changing the Story project, also from the British Academy. Uh, Mikateko, who got funding from Tatuka for a three-year project, as I understand it, only one of two research projects for which the Free State was given funding last year. I think that's a great achievement. To Melison, who most of you will know, um, she's our new research associate, and she, of course, has a big four-year British Academy project on decolonizing peace education. And then Karma, Mika, and Faith, um, for their grant from the ESRC for a project under the Tertiary Education and Sustainable Futures Project, and theirs will look specifically at higher education and climate justice. And then in Timmy for his competitive NRF postdoc fellowship. And of course, as an international um, applicant, he's competing, um, you, only something like 10% of the NRF funding goes to people who aren't South Africans. So when people who aren't South Africans get these awards, it means you've got a really good project. And I just want to say that Faith also got one of these postdocs, but she, at the same time, we'd offered her a five-year research um, contract and she took the research contract. But the point about this funding is not the money, um, uh, you know, who was it? Was it Aristotle who said, you know, money, wealth in, in itself is not the end. The end is well-being and the flourishing of, of people. So the point of this funding is that it's allowing very exciting projects to go ahead and I think will further contribute, uh, strengthen our contributions to Global South um, research. Um, then there's a range of other things. Um, there's my A1 NRF rating, awarded for the second time at the end of last year, and I like to think that this is good for all of us and not just good for me. And then for me uh, personally, very exciting, and I hope also for the group, the fact that I've been elected as president of the Human Development and Capability Association. My term as president-elect starts in September and is followed by two years as president. And I'm looking forward to that enormously. Um, it, it, the HDCA is my intellectual home and my, my academic family. And then, of course, there have also been other executive officers elected to HDCA from our group, Carmen, Malis, Oliver, and then on HDCA um, thematic groups, Faith, Patience, who's not with us anymore but was until the end of last year, Mika and Tendai. I have to say, for such a small research group, we are punching well above our weight um, internationally, and, and I think... The contributions we're going to be able to make um, from, from the Global South to HDCA are going to be really, really important um, and substantively important as well. I have to mention Fenella's 52,000 plus reads of her article in the conversation. It's probably double that by now. Well done. Um, I think that's an awful lot of readers. And Oh, there we are, 85,000 reads of <laughs> article. Uh, well done, Fenella. It's a, it's a kind of an inspiration to the rest of us. Um, in terms of, of the group as a whole, I think once we got going in the second half of 2020, once we'd abandoned all hope that life was going to return to normal in, in a hurry, and it clearly wasn't, you know, we, we kept on, because they kept extending the lockdowns, we kept on hoping that we were coming to the end of them. But I think once we got going in the second half of 2020 and, accept, had, and had begun to accept that COVID was here for a while, our program of brown bag talks and seminars has really, really gained ground and is doing very, very well. We've got better at working online. And of course, we now have a much wider pool of presenters from whom we can draw. And I imagine that going forward, we will continue with this hybrid model of um, of accessing um, a wider online community for some of the things that we do. Um, we used to have a very successful uh, Pomodoro uh, writing space every week uh, before COVID, and then nothing really happened last year, and, and that's probably, probably my fault. But I want to thank Mikateko for reviving the Pomodoros um, at the beginning of this year and developing a hybrid model, and now to Fenella and Sander, who continuing the good work in organizing this. It's a really useful space, meeting once a week for three hours and just getting on with, with writing. 
I must mention our WhatsApp group, which was originally set up by Lucretia, basically to celebrate birthdays. That's how it started out. And it became absolutely invaluable and continues to be invaluable as a means for sustaining our everyday communication and sharing events, successes, and information. So I think that WhatsApp group has been a real um, lifesaver. I want to very formally welcome the three PhD students who joined us in 2020. You know, you were barely here when we were all gone. Um, who, they've now completed their field work, Edward, Andra, Andrew, and Kura, and to Sander, our associate PhD, and then to our new, two new PhDs for 2021. Some, some of uh, you might be meeting each other for the first time. Um, Chimwemwe, who's come from Malawi, and Moffat, who's come from Zimbabwe, and who've just got through the hurdle of presenting to the Faculty Research Committee. So they're on their way now. And I, our PhDs are just so important in the life of the research group. They have been from the outset. And I think the six of you have a range of great projects. Access to HE in, in Zambian private higher education, alternative post-school pathways in Malawi, student activism and social media in South Africa, climate justice and the role of universities in Malawi, decolonizing higher education in South Africa, and architecture and human development. Our postdocs, of course, continue to contribute to our research culture and our publications profile. Monique, Fenella, Bertha, Carmen, Intimi, and the elusive Erasmus. So thank you for all that you do and all your contributions, your valuable contributions to the group. Our two full-time researchers, Mikateko and Faith, who lead with grace, with imagination and Ubuntu, and who both do such great res research and development work. Last and definitely most, definitely not least, Lucretia who manages the group with meticulous attention to detail, can't tell you how important that is, and dedication all the time, and who pulled together this wonderful day for us. So thank you, Lucretia. So overall then, let's celebrate the strength and the reach of our world-leading research group and all the people who constitute the higher education and human development research group. It's a privilege to work with all of you.